What we're going to be looking at here is uh, partial period depreciation allocation and several methods of al allocating your depreciation here. And what we mean by that here, the company is running its fiscal year here from January 1st through December 31st each year here. And then they typically make a purchase here. In this case, it's of some equipment here on, in this case, June 10th here of year 20X1. And of course, they have to allocate the depreciation for the year here. But what we're going to be looking at is how we allocate this uh, partial period depreciation for uh, the total of uh, one, one year increments here and we're going to uh, start our allocation here on 610 each year here 20x1 through 20x2 and so forth and uh, for example here we're just going to be looking at uh, example where we use a straight line depreciation but you could be using uh, any some of your digits or some declining balance as well here and you can use you'd be using the same methods here for your allocation so for our example we're going to have a ninety thousand dollar piece of equipment uh, that's purchased here it has a five-year life so we have eighteen thousand dollars worth of depreciation each year here on it now what we're going to Again, our uh, partial period allocation, we're going to be looking, starting with the fractional year here and looking how we do that. And it's uh, this is how we do it. Of course, you're remaining here in 20x1 here. So we'd have our 610 day through the 1231st, the end of the year. And that equates to six and two thirds months here divided by 12 months. That gives us a 55.6 point percent allocation here for the remaining here of 20x1 that we're uh, since we've purchased this equipment here and we put it into uh, production let's say and then the balance uh, remaining amount here of five and two uh, one-third months is going to be allocated here for the uh, the it would be start here in 20x2 it would be January 1st through 610 and five and a third months here gives us 44 0.4 percent allocation here so we've got a total amount here allocated for them it's running here from 610 a 20x1 through again 610 here 20x2 so we're accounted for one year's allocation here and of course this is based on our fractional year here and what I'm getting at here is one uh, just to set up your chart here to determine your amount of depreciation that you'd recognize each year here and what you would do is this case you set up uh, determine your depreciation each year here and uh, again it doesn't matter if you're using some of your digits or what are uh, some declining balance just to determine your depreciation amount each year here and then you divide it up between your fractional amounts so uh, for an um, our amount here for straight line, we're going to have 18,000 here per year. So, so for 20x1, you're going to get the fractional amount here of 55.6% of that 18,000 for 10,000. And then the remaining amount here, the fractional amount goes in 20x2 here for 18,000. And that would equate to 8,000. And then you just continue on the same fashion here. For year two, our uh, depreciation amount, it would be divided between 20x2, the first uh, fractional amount here, 55.6% times 18 thousand for ten thousand here you can see that and then for 20x3 gets the next fractional amount here for this total amount here for the year here of 44 percent times eighteen thousand for eight thousand and then just continue on in the same fashion here year three you get the first uh, fractional amount here from uh, that would be your uh, June or your 610 day through your end of the year here for 20x3 here and that would and then you would have it would flow into 20x4 and so forth but just to determine uh, your depreciation allocation each year it's good to set up your chart here so then you can just sum them right on down here if 20x1 you got that total ten thousand dollar amount here for 20x2 okay so you got the eighteen thousand here eight thousand plus ten you can see that here for 20x3 same deal just sum on your amounts down that you've allocated your period allocation or your partial period allocation 8,000 plus 10,000 gives you $18,000 so you can see how your chart works here and then it keeps your calculations nice and clean and easy and you can see your period allocation or partial period allocation for each year here so uh, it's a little bit more uh, complicated if you have to use your sum of your digits or your declining balance to determine your depreciation but nonetheless you still allocate it in the same fashion here based on your fractional part of the year that you're allocating here okay now let's go down and look at our other uh, what we're getting at here in our other allocation methods of course uh, again we looked at our fractional part of the year here and what we're going to get out of this here is our how we would allocate it here and it's always going to be based on the first and the last year's asset life here 
All right, so let's go look at our chart here. So our, we got five different, actually six different methods here for allocating our um, partial period depreciation here. And what you want to do is you just want to be consistent here and how you do it. But what we're going to concentrate on here is, of course, our depreciation allocation. And our example here is over a five-year life here. And what I want to point out here is that when we talk about five-year life, I've got them marked in red here. You're actually talking about six periods in this case when we do our allocation. We started, we were at 20x1, but you can see x2, 20x3, x4, x5, and x6. So we actually have six periods here. So we have our, what we're going to be concentrating on here is just our first uh, year allocation here in our last year allocation for that total depreciation. In this case, we had the $90,000 and we were depreciated here at $18,000 per year. So number one here, looking at our nearest fraction of the year here. Now that is what we uh, calculated up above here. We did the fractional year here and from that was from 610 here. Start, and that was our start date here, 610 each year here. So for 20X1, we had $10,000 here and then 18,000 for each subsequent year here. until 20X2, uh, we uh, the the remaining of balance here between the eighteen thousand here would go to the end of the year here or the end last period here twenty x six here of eight thousand dollars. So you can see here ten thousand plus eight thousand equals eighteen thousand. So all you're concentrating on is your beginning and your ending amounts here. Now you come up with this next method here. It's the nearest full month here. Now what we mean by that, and this is what companies normally use here, this nearest full month here when they're doing their allocation. We made our purchase here on 610 here, but rather than go through that fractional uh, method that we did up above, we would do the same thing here, but we would, instead of from 610, we would just start out with 71 here. So that would change our fraction somewhat. So we're look we'd be looking at 71 through the end of the year here. So instead of 610, you just go to the next month, June 10th. Well, the next full month here is Jan or July here. So we start out with July 1st here. And then based on that, July 1st, if we did our uh, fractional amount, we would have come up with 10,500 here for the first period, 20x1 here. And then for our end, our 20x6 period or the end period, you get seven and a half thousand dollars. So again, you can see how we allocated it here. Ten and a half thousand plus seven and a half thousand equals our total amount of allocate uh, uh, depreciation per year here of eighteen thousand. That's all you have to know here: beginning and end. And uh, then next uh, third case here: half year in the period of acquisition and disposal. Well, in this case. Half of it's going to go here into 20x1 of 9,000, and then the other half goes into 20x6 here, 9,000. Total amount here divided evenly between uh, the 18,000 per year divided between the beginning amount here and the end amount. And now number four here, full year in the period of acquisition and none in the period of disposal. So everything gets dumped into the first year here, year here. 20x1, 18,000, and then for 20x6, zero amount here, zero total amount, 18,000 again. Number five here, none in the period of acquisition, but the full amount in the period of disposal. Okay, so 20x1 here, zero amount, 20x6 here, $18,000. Okay, and then total amount is 18,000 again here. So number six here, modified accelerated cost recovery. That's for IRS tax purposes. And that has its own tables and that's a separate issue here. And what we're looking at here is just gap type accounting that we would typically do. But for taxes, you have to use the uh, uh, cost recovery system here. Okay, just so you understand, you have these different methods here one through five that we looked at and the most common one here used by company is the nearest full month here and then what you do is uh, you figure out your depreciation per year here uh, and then it's how you matter of how you allocate it I don't care if you're using some of your digits or straight line or uh, declining balance it's a matter of how you make your beginning allocation here and your ending allocation here beginning period here and the end period so uh, just be consistent. Use one of these methods here. And what I did here is I went through this nearest fractional amount here. Uh, just typically just to understand how you would uh, go about doing it because uh, we can go back up here really quick here. 
Okay, had we used, uh, rather than the sum of your digits here, had we been using, uh, I don't know, well, rather than the straight line, excuse me, and we say for example, we're using sum of years, digits here, the depreciation amount would be different uh, each year here. Uh, and then this allocation or this fractional amount and how you uh, set up your chart here really becomes in handy here because then it is, it's, it's more complicated, but you do it in the same fashion here. And that, it's only as complicated only to determine your depreciation amounts here, but then when you're determining your fractional amounts, it would be the same technique up here, but it's a little cleaner here when you use your chart for your allocation because then you, you can uh, determine your fractional amount here uh, divided up between your periods here and then you just sum up your amount here for each year and you can come up with the amount of depreciate total amount of depreciation here for each year so this comes in handy here using this uh, fraction uh, this chart here for setting up your fractional year amounts regardless of what uh, method you use for depreciating your asset here